Today we're doing the pancreas lab, so we're going to do a little demonstration of a few things on the board and then we'll look at slides, images from slides of the pancreas to see the details of the histology of the pancreas. Uh, the overall shape of the pancreas, something like this, of course it attaches over here to the intestine by a main pancreatic duct. That main pancreatic duct comes out here and it has branches that come into it from the different sides. There is a uh, larger duct that leads down into this lobe. There are two lobes there of the pancreas. But as you go out from here, you see the uh, main ducts that lead into this main pancreatic duct scattered through the tissue fairly regular intervals that correspond generally to the lobes of the pancreas. So this pancreas, I should say lobules, the lobules of the pancreas. So this pancreas out here is divided into lobules. There is a loose connective tissue that surrounds the entire pancreas, not a thick, dense capsule like we saw on the spleen or liver or kidney. Uh, but uh, uh, kind of a loose connective tissue and a thin layer of mesothelium over most of the uh, pancreas. Um, but like I say, it's divided into lobules, so there'd be connective tissue septa that come in here and divide this pancreatic tissue into the different lobules. So that's the overall of the, of the pancreas. We need to go in here next and talk about uh, the details in there. So we'll see how those uh, ducts branch out to form the um, exocrine portion of the pancreas. But within that also, we're going to see these little patches of endocrine tissue we call the islets of Langerhans that are scattered out throughout the uh, tissues of the exocrine pancreas. So we have endocrine elements and we have exocrine elements of our pancreas and these little blue circles represent our islets of Langerhans that are scattered through the exocrine pancreas out here. Um, so we need to draw a detail of the exocrine pancreas here next. The exocrine portion of the pancreas consists of a number of secretory cells we call pancreatic acid or cells. So these cells stain pretty well with the basic stain in our uh, slide collection. They kind of have that blue-purple color to them. And it's made up of small granules that pick up that stain within the cytoplasm of the cells. These cells have that pyramidal shape, they get wider on the outside and narrower toward the middle and they have a nucleus generally more toward the base than the apex of the cell. A nice round nucleus. So these secrete the pancreatic digestive enzymes. Pancreatic acinar cells. Very much like what we saw in the parotid gland, the kind of cells that we have there, they look very much the same. There are no myoepithelial cells that surround the acinus of the pancreatic uh, exocrine uh, tissue. And in the middle of the acinus, the pancreatic acinus tissue here, uh, there are clusters of cells we call centroacinar cells. Centroacinar cells here in this light blue color. They are pale staining cells. Uh, they have uh, uh, irregular shapes, kind of oblong shapes often. Uh, but anyway, they're, they're located in that center region right next to where the duct exits the cluster of cells, that acinus of cells. So this would be the uh, 
first part of that exocrine duct system leading out right here. This would be an intercalated duct. Intercalated duct, central acinar cells, pancreatic acinar cells. Those are the main components we see in our exocrine pancreas. There's not much connective tissue and fibroblasts around these uh, uh, excretory um, tissues. There will be little bits, occasional fibroblasts, but not much collagen until you get to larger ducts. This duct here, this uh, intercalated duct, I've drawn probably a little long. It wouldn't go very far before you enter into a larger duct where it joins with the other pancreatic ducts that drain in here that, that would be larger ducts along the way. So you'll end up with a much larger duct heading out down here, a larger lumen, larger cavity, and your cells still be cuboidal cells probably at this point. This would still be an intralobular duct. Intralobular duct. A larger duct in cross section. Have a larger lumen. And there would be more connective tissues surrounding the larger ducts. So the larger the duct is, the more connective tissue collagen material and fibroblasts you have around the outside of that. So those are things we'll be looking for in that exocrine pancreas and the detail of it. We'll be looking for the central acinar cells here in the middle, the pancreatic acinar cells that surround it, intercalated ducts, and intralobular ducts in the lobules of the pancreas. We'll also look for the connective tissue septa that divide the lobules, and uh, we'll be looking for the islets of liner hands that are lighter staining clusters of cells, uh, larger than an acinus generally, uh, but lighter staining cells that form a, an obvious grouping in the uh, distributed throughout the exocrine pancreas. We're going to begin our slide series looking at um, pancreas tissue at lower magnification so we can see some septa, see lobules in the tissue. So those are the things we're going to emphasize first. Uh, this is um, one lobule and within that we can see some pale regions in here of uh, the islets of Langer hands. The rest of the tissue out around it, they're mostly the exocrine pancreas. It consists of pancreatic acne, all acinar cells and central acinar cells and their ducts and, and so forth. Little bits of connective tissue here and there. It's difficult to tell in some places um, separation of acne, where one stops and the next begins. Uh, but in some places we get good separation of the, the tissues where we can see individual uh, circles of cells that make up the pancreatic acne in there. Down near the bottom of the screen there's a good septum along there and up here there's a, the other side of this lobule. So the screen is pretty much filled with one lobule. Next view, uh, here we see another septum. There's a lot of fat along this septum right here and continuing up this direction here. There are some uh, pale spots right here, right here, and right here. Point out a few that are the uh, islets of Langerhans. There are some fat cells out in among the uh, pancreatic tissue, very much like what we saw in the parotid gland, that salivary gland. Down in this corner, there's a larger duct. We'll look at the larger ducts here in a minute uh, in some other examples. But anyway, this again shows separation. There's a, there's a partition line right here. So this is a lobule on this side. This is a lobule to this side. Same thing with this partition line here. This is lobule. That's a separate lobule down there. And you see another parting line, separating line right along here. Here along this separating line, we've had the tissue pull apart a little bit so our collagen doesn't fill the gap 
quite like what you would expect, but it separates the lobules pretty well. So this is a lobule all to itself here, and this is a lobule over here, but uh, there seems to be a septum heading out this direction, dividing this from the next lobule over this direction. Now there's a vein, an artery, and a nerve here, and another venule passing through there with lots of blood in it. So your, your vessels and your nerves kind of follow these septa as they lead into the, the pancreas. No islets of Langerhans uh, uh, apparent on the screen here. Possibly this, but it really doesn't show up very well. But lots of your uh, pancreatic acinar arrangements in here, these little circles of cells, and some central acinar cells, which we'll be pointing out in other slides here in a minute. Something you don't often see in the slide sections, but we'll point out here, this is obviously connective tissue, and here are three large nuclei of ganglion cells. As it was in the salivary glands, you're going to have ganglion cells occupying uh, some of the connective tissues in the uh, pancreas as well. So uh, extending from that, we have septum going out this way, a septum going out this way, and a septum down in there. So we have a lot of division of uh, lobules shown around these ganglion cells. Here we're seeing a nice islet of Langerhans right here in the, in the center. That pale region is not organized in the same way as the darker tissues around it into those acini. Here's a much magnified view of a single islet of Langerhans. This is uh, outlined all around here. To the perimeter, we see pancreatic acinar cells over here and up along there. But these all in here are, are islet of Langerhans cells. They are pale staining cells and not organized in the same way as the acinar cells that surround it. There's a blood vessel down right here with some blood cells in it. And there should be a number of capillaries. I see a capillary here, a capillary here. Um, generally, the, the islets of Langerhans are well supplied with capillaries, so we'll always look in there to see if we have any obvious capillaries in our islet of Langerhans when we have it on a high magnification like this. Another islet of Langerhans, this is a more pale stain than what we had on the other. But anyway, this grouping of cells here, notice that the nuclei are all nice little marbles, little balls in there. More pale staining than the nuclei of the uh, pancreatic acinar cells that are so dark. So the acini show up real well in here. They're nicely separated from one another. And there, there are some centro acinar cells, these here, these cells right here, these cells here. A few fibroblast nuclei, there's one here, one here, one here, one here. Not a lot of collagen associated with it, this region we're looking at right here. Around some of the septa and along some of the larger ducts, you'll have more collagen deposited. Right here we just have scant little bits of collagen fibers and uh, fibroblasts few and far between. Here we see uh, a low magnification view again of pancreatic tissue. We have a septum coming down along this line right here, dividing two parts, and we have a few large adipose cells, fat cells scattered in. Here we want to emphasize some central acinar cells. There is a little capillary passing through right here in the image, but uh, these darker cells are the pancreatic acinar cells. These lighter cells right here, these would be central acinar cells. Over here we have a ring of darker cells, darker nuclei, and here we have central acinar cells, and it looks like it's leading into an intercalated duct right here. More central acinar cells right over here.
There are some fibroblasts, one here and one here, one here, one down here. And little bits of collagen around some of this. There's some collagen here, collagen here, collagen right there. Not very thick, always very thin, very loose connective tissues, very little bit of collagen fiber. A similar view here, another view of central acinar cells coming right up in the middle of an acinus, and these are the acinar cells. Surrounding that, a little bit of collagen coming out through here, fibroblast nucleus right above it there. Uh, here we have a pancreas with a much paler stain, doesn't have that dark bluish color, it's mostly pink. But again, we can still see this, the uh, acinar cells surrounding a group of central acinar cells there in the middle. We can still see the collagen. We can still make out the features, even though it's a more uh, pale stain and more pink, not much blue color to it. This slide, uh, this picture was made to emphasize this intercalated duct passing through right here. Again, it has that pale staining cytoplasm and that stepping stone look with the nuclei uh, along the path of the intercalated duct. Uh, a, another duct up in here, it's a slightly larger duct, still has a it's fairly small, not, not as big as the intercalated duct. I mean, not as small as the intercalated duct, but still fairly small. Plenty of uh, acinar cells and centroacinar cells exist. Here's more centroacinar cells here. Lots of examples of both cell types on this view. Here's a very small intercalated duct in, indicated here. Pale staining cells in a cluster there, making a nice circle. The very beginning of an intercalated duct leaving a uh, uh, pancreatic acinus. Another small intercalated duct right here, a large fat cell over here on this side, a blood vessel down at the bottom, some collagen coming up in here, a few fibroblast nuclei along the way. Looks like part of another intercalated duct right along here. Acinar cells and a single central acinar cell right there. Not many central acinar cells to point to on this particular view. There's a one single one right here. Here's a nice view of an intercalated duct. You see coming right up to this uh, acinar arrangement right here. So these are acinar cells, a few central acinar cells in here in the middle, and then the uh, intercalated duct leading out from that. It looks like another intercalated duct, duct coming up to join it here, and the duct gets bigger as it heads off to the right. This would be an intralobular duct, not an intercalated duct. We can see that it's a larger uh, lumen. It's got uh, more cells around it, a greater number of cells surrounding it. It's more of a cross-sectional view, and it has a considerable amount of collagen around the outside of it. So that's still within a lobule, so it's intralobular, an intralobular duct. Still surrounded by pancreatic acid. Another intralobular duct, still within a lobule right here. 
uh, has considerable amount of collagen around it. There's a vein and an artery up here and an adipose cell here. Possibly a septum right over here on this side. Another intralobular duct. Doesn't have very much collagen around it, just a thin line of it, so it's not a very large intralobular duct. So we've had a few intercalated ducts come together to make up that single duct there. Another example, good example of an intra, well that's interlobular it says. So this, this is part of a septum that divides this lobule from this lobule. You can't really tell at this high magnification. If you had a lower magnification you could see that it was dividing to, to lobules of the pancreas. Another interlobular duct. Here we have a good septum coming along here, a septum heading out this way and probably heading up this way. Bit of a uh, pancreatic islet, an islet of Langerhans right here. Notice the cells are much taller. Larger ducts get taller cells, more columnar in shape, and more collagen surrounding the, the duct. So it's not within a lobule, but it's between, so it's interlobular. Another example of an interlobular duct, fairly large duct that's part of a septum that divides the uh, lobules. Even though it has a fairly large lumen, the cells are not as tall as they were in that last example. Here's another large pancreatic duct. This would be one of the main pancreatic ducts. This is not within a lobule or within a septum. It's, it's heading out of the pancreas. So this is part of a large pancreatic duct. I don't know if it's the main pancreatic duct, but it's a very large pancreatic duct. And it has columnar cells all around the margin and an extremely thick layer of connective tissue surrounding the duct. Another view of that same duct here on a lower magnification, we can see pancreatic uh, acne, the uh, lobule over here, all that connective tissue, the epithelium of the uh, main excretory duct, a smaller duct coming up towards it right here from the uh, septum, so that would be an uh, interlobular pancreatic duct. Heading up to a main pancreatic duct. This next image is kind of an odd sort of thing to be thinking about when you're looking at pancreas, but this is in one of our slides in our collection. This looks like a Pacinian corpuscle, and that's exactly what it is. This is a sensory receptor, a pressure receptor, and these, these can be found in some of your internal organs, mainly associated with mesenteries of your internal uh, anatomy. But there's a Pacinian corpuscle in the pancreas. Here's an artery and a vein. Notice they're associated with septa. There's a septum coming down here and kind of extending out over this way, dividing things up. So here's our artery, here's our vein, and all of this is normal uh, pancreatic tissue. Pancreatic acne, centroacinar cells, pancreatic acinar cells, collagen and fibroblasts making up most of that tissue. Part of a septum going on right here. All of the, well, here's a little bit of nerve actually going on right there. This is collagen dense irregular connective tissue. A small artery and small vein side by side down here. There's a sim simple um, pancreatic acinus right here with centroacinar cells in the middle. A 
And that's our last image.